doors by the front door Don't forget the keys under the mat Childhood stars shine Always stay humble and kind Go to church cause your mama says to Visit grandpa every chance that you can It won't be a wasted time Always stay humble and kind Hold the door, say please, say thank you Don't steal, don't cheat, no lie I know you got mountains to climb but When it's hot, eat a root beer popsicle Shut off the AC and roll the windows down Let that summer sun shine Always stay humble and kind Don't take for granted the love this life gives you When you get where you're going, don't forget turn back around Help the next one in line Always stay humble and kind Good evening. I'm Bill Betlay, lay leader at Calvary United Methodist Church in Stewart Straft, Virginia. Thank you for joining me tonight for Tuesday Night Vespers. Our Vesper series is focusing on the fruit of the Spirit. Each Tuesday evening, we will reflect on and examine the specific fruit that is grown from our being filled with the Holy Spirit. Vespers, or evening prayer, simply allows us to pause and give thanks for the day that has just passed and also make an evening sacrifice of praise to God. Each week, we will begin with a short prayer followed by a scripture. I hope you will join me in the responses that will appear on your screen. Mary Jo Ramsey Smith, who is our worship music leader during this series, will lead us in a song, and that will be followed with a short reflection for you to consider your everyday walk with God. Our guest tonight will be Beth Otto. More about Beth in a bit. I will then wrap up and we will end with a good night prayer together, and I hope you will feel relaxed and thankful and be ready to start your nighttime rest. Tonight, our focus is kindness. So let's begin. Come, Holy Spirit, fill us. Come, holy breath, live in us. Come, holy wind, move through us and cause the fruit of your Spirit to ripen in our lives. Our responsive reading tonight is a collection of wisdom sayings from the book of Proverbs. These are just a few of the many words Proverbs has to say about kindness. From a wise mind comes wise speech. The words of the wise are persuasive. Kind words are like honey, sweet to the soul and healthy for the body. Anxiety weighs down the heart, but a kind word cheers it up. Those who pursue righteousness and kindness will find life, righteousness, and honor. Those who are kind benefit themselves, but the cruel bring ruin on themselves. When she speaks, her words are wise, and she gives instruction with kindness. Amen. Our song tonight is a popular contemporary hymn, Mighty to Save. It was written in 2006, and it won the 2009 Dove Award. It appears in the second supplement to the UMC hymnal, Worship and Song, the Green Book. Let's join Mary Jo as she leads us this evening.
Our scripture reading is from Ruth, chapter 2, verses 8 through 13. So Boaz says to Ruth, my daughter, listen to me. Don't go and glean in another field and don't go away from here. Stay here with the women who work for me. Watch the field where the men are harvesting and follow along after the women. I have told the men not to lay a hand on you. And whenever you are thirsty, go and get a drink from the water jars the men have filled. 
At this, she bowed down with her face to the ground, and she asked him, Why have I found such favor in your eyes that you've noticed me, a foreigner? And Boaz replied, I've been told all about what you have done for your mother-in-law since the death of your husband, how you left your father and mother and your homeland and came to live with a people you did not know before. May the Lord repay you for what you have done. May you be richly rewarded by the Lord, the God of Israel, under whose wings you have come to take refuge. May I continue to find favor in your eyes, my Lord, she said. You have put me at ease by speaking kindly to your servant, though I do not have the standing of one of your servants. I grew up in the valley. The development where our home was built was a part of the Red Top Apple Orchard in Ladd. Right next door was a chicken farm run by the Heatwell family. And over the years, I remember farmers talking about being kind to the land. That meant taking care of it and not abusing it. I didn't miss the lesson, because people, too, should be treated with kindness. Our guest tonight is Beth Otto. Beth is currently our co-lay leader at Calvary in Stewart Straff. A wife and a mother of two, what I love most about Beth is her compassion, understanding, and kindness for others. Let's listen as Beth shares her thoughts on tonight's Fruit of the Spirit. Good evening. Welcome to my quarantine corner. <laughs> this evening, I'm going to be talking about kindness. More specifically, what kindness looks like for us as Christians do you remember the last time you were the recipient of an act of kindness? I had a night last week where it was especially hectic. I had a lot of work to do before going to bed and earlier in the evening, we received some disappointing news. I was so preoccupied that I ended up being late to a Zoom meeting with Pastor David and Bill. About halfway through the meeting, my son popped his head into the room and gave me a milkshake from Klein's. And milkshakes from Klein's might be one of my favorite things, a special treat. I hadn't asked him to buy me a milkshake that evening. Anyway, in that moment, after a long, tough day, I felt loved and my spirits were lifted through that simple act of kindness. After agreeing to do this reflection, I asked myself, how would I even go about defining the term kindness? The basic definition of de demonstrating generosity just doesn't seem to do a big concept like kindness, the justice it deserves. Kindness extends beyond niceness. It involves compassion, a spirit of generosity, and it's always intentional. Unlike niceness, Kindness is never selfish and often involves putting the needs of others above your own. Nor is kindness passive in the way that niceness can be passive. When we look to scripture, we see an act of kindness when Jesus heals the man with leprosy. Mark chapter one, verses 40 through 45. A man with leprosy came to him and begged him on his knees. If you are willing, you can make me clean. Filled with compassion, Jesus reached out his hand and touched the man. I am willing, he said, be clean. Immediately the leprosy left him and he was cured. Jesus sent him away at once with a strong warning. See that you don't tell this to anyone, but go. Show yourself to the priests and offer the sacrifices that Moses commanded for your cleansing as a testimony to them. Instead, the man went out and began to talk freely, spreading the news. And as a result, Jesus could no longer enter a town openly, but had to stay out in lowly places. And the people still came to him from everywhere. A quick Google search about leprosy in biblical times will tell you that it is more than just a skin disease. It was associated with sin and an unsanitary or unholy lifestyle. In those days, people who had leprosy were ostracized. This man, shunned by his community, asks Jesus for help. 
and without hesitation, Jesus helps him. And it's clear in his words to, to the man, Jesus understands that this act of kindness will have negative consequences for him, but he still does it. We see some common themes with Jesus when it comes to kindness. Another example is in the story of living water with the Samaritan woman at the well. During those days, Jews and Samaritans did not mix. And then for Jesus to talk to this particular woman, she is identified as being promiscuous. Five husbands, maybe? I can only imagine how mind-blowing these actions would have been to the disciples. How scandalous. <laughs> these stories set a new standard in terms of what it means to be kind. We see through Jesus' examples that we are asked to be kind to those that we disagree with to those that have different lifestyles, political views, to those that look different or have different religious beliefs. Christian kindness means that we are being compassionate and useful to others because we are seeing them as individuals, not the labels that society puts on them. This is not an easy task to demonstrate kindness to those we disagree with. However, when we choose to do this, we are reflecting God's love through our acts of kindness. And that is a beautiful thing. Thank you for letting me share my reflections with you this evening. God bless. The Dalai Lama said, be kind whenever possible. And it's always possible. So be kind, no matter what. Join me now for our good night prayer. Our prayer is the same for each Vesper service so that you may become familiar with it and allow it to grow within you. So let's pray together. God, we ask that the fruit of your spirit may grow in us. The fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. As we would grow with you, may we bring forth fruit that is pleasing to you. And as we take our rest tonight, forgive us for the ways we have fallen short and strengthen us to do better when we wake. Amen. Thank you for joining us this week. We'll be back here next week on the Calvary UMC Facebook and YouTube pages for Tuesday evening Vespers, 7.30. We'll see you then. Good night. You know there's a light that glows by the front door. Don't forget the keys under the mat Childhood stars shine Always stay humble and kind Go to church cause your mama says to Visit grandpa every chance that you can It won't be a wasted time Always stay humble and kind Hold the door, say please, say thank you Don't steal, don't cheat, no lie I know you got mountains to climb But always stay humble and kind When it's hot, eat a root beer popsicle Shut off the AC and roll the windows down let that summer sun shine Always stay humble and kind Don't take for granted the love this life gives you When you get where you're going Don't forget, turn back around Help the next one in line Always stay humble